Welcome to Mancinelli's Math Lab. This was a requested question. Um, this, well, let's go through this. This is a bit of a different type of question than maybe some of you uh, are used to. Uh, but if you're taking any kind of upper division math class, you'll always have to do this kind of thing. We need to use, we need to uh, actually apply what's called proof by induction. So I will discuss sort of the idea as we go. Um, not a very confusing example, I don't think. I mean, I hope this question makes sense. You may take math classes later on well, where you have to spend hours, maybe even days, just understanding the question. I've been there. Anyways, anyways, this is the statement. We want to show that this inequality is true for any natural number n, so for all natural numbers, members, uh, so all n members of the natural numbers. Uh, and when you're given a question like this, I mean, you may not even be told to prove something by induction, but you should be thinking that this is a good time actually to prove this by induction. Now, I didn't actually try it yet, but you may actually be able to prove this directly by just applying the binomial theorem here on this piece right here, and maybe just um, using some logic to set up an inequality there. I didn't actually try, but I think that might work. Let's do induction though. Uh, so proof by induction, um, let me sort of just start to write it out um, and I'll explain as I go. So I'm going to jump right to the proof actually. Okay. So the way that I usually, when I used to write proofs by induction, I would say something like this. So uh, we will use uh, induction, induction on n. Now the way this works is we want to first establish one, maybe two base cases. Okay, so let me show you what I mean. So this is usually called the base case. And we usually will just go through maybe one or two values of n. So I'll do two values. So uh, if n is one, if n is one, this is trivial. This is absolutely trivial uh, because this is one plus x. Um, and I'll put maybe uh, just a question mark right here. I mean, is this true? Of course this is true. Is this greater than or equal to uh, 1 plus x times 1? I'll, I'll put a 1 there just to sort of uh, illustrate what I'm doing here, right? I mean, I'm replacing n with 1. So, of course this is true. And what I usually do in, in a proof is I'll just put a check right there. I'll put a check indicating, yeah, we're good to go right there. Now, what about n is 2? So what if n equals 2? All right, we'll replace n is 2, uh, n with 2, and maybe you do some sort of manipulation to convince yourself, but uh, I think this is pretty apparent as well. Uh, 1 plus x squared, is that greater than or equal to 1 plus 2x? Is this true? I mean, god damn it. I mean, if you're watching my videos, you probably know a significant amount of math and you don't make this stupid mistake of distributing the two through a binomial. Completely illegal. Foil this out. This is 1 plus 2x plus x squared, right? This is 1 plus 2x plus x squared. Is this greater than this? This is absolutely, absolutely true. This is true. Why is that? Let me write down some justification real quick. Because, because x squared is greater than or equal to zero for all x in R. I mean, right? This, the only difference here between this term and this term, uh, sorry, this expression and this one, is that I've added on a term, namely x squared, which is always at least zero. So this is always at least greater than this. All right, I hope you're convinced. Now let's try the, the sort of, I guess, abstract step, which is the inductive step. So the inductive step uh, goes as false. And this is where usually if there's any sort of lack of understanding the logic, it's right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to, this is kind of weird, we're going to assume, so we've established two cases, we're going to say, okay, this is probably true and I could do more base cases, I'm not convinced. But we're going to say, let's suppose that this holds uh, for some m. So we're going to do, here's what I'm going to say the following. So suppose that the inequality, which is the following, uh, 1 plus x to the n is greater than or equal to 
1 plus xn, force on m, for, uh, for n in n, right? So the idea here, and you have to really understand the logic here, is I'm fixing an m, I'm fixing a natural number, and I'm saying, let's just suppose this is true. I mean, I established some base cases. All right, we have a good idea. Let's just assume this is true. Kind of sketchy, right? I mean, kind of weird. But the idea is this. If I assume this is true, and this assumption actually implies that the next natural number also yields an inequality like this, which is true, that natural number and this original natural number m, they're completely arbitrary. Oh, it must be true for every single m. So what it's saying here is that this case, if true, assume it's true, it implies the next case is true. But this n is arbitrary. So this could have been any natural number. It could have been a million. It could have been a trillion. So what we're saying here is that if, if n is a trillion and we assume it, that a trillion works, not only does it work, but it implies that a trillion in one works, I must work for every single n. Think about that for a second. I mean, sit and stare at the wall for a while. This is what you have to do when you study math. Is you just, you really just have to get the logic down. Okay? It takes time. It takes patience. I'm not saying it's easy. It's not easy. Math is not easy, right? Math is hard as hell. All right. We've assumed this is true. Now what? We look at the n plus one case. So consider. So then, what is 1 plus x to the n plus 1? Well, let's just do some easy algebra. This is equal to 1 plus x to the n, 1 plus x. Now I'll use the inductive step. Use the, well, use the assumption. This is, uh, this is greater than or equal to. Well, think about it for a second. I, I, you have to, I mean, the reason you assume this is that so you can use it. <laughs> if you don't use this, the inductive step, uh, this piece, I mean, you did it wrong. So by assumption, this inequality holds. So this is, uh, this right here, one plus X to the N is greater than or equal to one plus X N times one plus X. So all I've done is I've said that this is greater than or equal to this by assumption. I mean, we assume this, so by assumption. All right, so now what? Well, we're pretty much good to go. I mean, use your algebra skills, multiply these together. This is one uh, plus xn plus x uh, plus um, nx squared. Now, one more, well, two more steps. This is equal to one plus, uh, let's write it this way. This is equal to x times n plus one plus nx squared. Now we pretty much have it, right? I claim we're pretty much done because look, this is the n plus one uh, power and we wanna show that it's greater than this. Is that true? Well. Hell yeah, it's true. I mean, think about this a second. What can you say about this? N is a natural number, X is a real number, but I'm squaring it. So what I claim is the following, that this is, uh, this is greater than or equal to one plus X times N plus one. Justification is, so because, because N X squared is greater than or equal to zero for all X and R, all real numbers x and n in n. I mean, clearly, clearly, right? So that does it. So hence, so hence, so hence, one plus x to the n plus one is greater than or equal to one plus x times n plus one um, for all n natural numbers. I mean, you could say one other step. I mean, the last thing is just make a conclusion. Just say, therefore, this holds for every single n, and we're good to go. So I hope this makes sense to you. Um, maybe I'll say one. I don't even know if I want to say this. Should I even say this? Let me just say something real quick. If you if you actually tuned into this video towards the end, most people don't even watch my whole video. So if you watch the whole video, 
This is the idea, real quick, behind proof by induction. This is how this was explained to me the very first time. I thought this was ridiculous. The idea, though, is that you show you can get to, you're climbing a ladder. <laughs> show that you can get to the first couple rungs of the ladder. All right, no big deal. Those are my base cases. Now, let's assume you can get to the nth rung of the ladder. The idea is that if we assume, if when we assume we can get to the nth rung of the ladder, that that implies we can get to the next rung of the ladder, that implies we can get to any rung in the ladder. You should be saying, what the hell? I think that's what everyone says the first time they hear that. Tell me what you think. Please give the video a thumbs up. And um, thank you for the request.